Hello and good morning to all. Here I am Dr. Y.D. Divedi, Professor from Institute of Aeronautical Engineering, Hyderabad, India. I am here to discuss about the course. The course name is Aircraft Stability and Control. And today I am going to take lecture number 26, which is Point Mass Equation of Motions. Till now we have discussed about aircraft longitudinal static stability, aircraft lateral and directional static stability. And we have done so much work and we have completed 25 lectures on this. Today I will go further a small re revision and then I will proceed ahead. These are my lectures topic for the day. And I will start with the revision of directional and lateral static stability, which recently we have covered. Then I will go for the contribution of dihedral on lateral stability, contribution of sweep on directional stability, then a small derivation on point mass equations of motion. This lecture answers the following questions. What is point mass? What is the application of point mass equations of motion? These things I am going to discuss in today's lecture. So I am just first proceeding with revision which we have already completed in the last hours and here first I will go for the static stability. So what is the static stability? It is the it is the tendency of the aircraft to return to its equilibrium condition. So once the tendency is there that it is trying to reach to its equilibrium, we say that it is a statically stable. In this, we are not involving any time factor. But for the dynamic stability, a time is after a finite time, the system is going to be stable or unstable or neutrally stable. So here we have already done with longitudinal static stability. In this case, we have seen that if dcm by d alpha is less than zero, then we can say that aircraft is longitudinal static stability. So we have seen that this is called cm alpha is less than zero and second con condition cm naught is greater than zero. So we have seen that if the we are plotting CM versus alpha or CL and the plot is going negative like this. We say that this is the CM alpha is less than zero or negative. And here the CM naught should be greater than zero or positive. So if it is, we are, if we take the aircraft in wind tunnel and we have, we are finding out the coefficient of moment and if the coefficient of moment, when we increase the angle of attack, if the coefficient of moment is decreasing, then we say that aircraft is longitudinal static state. It means once the aircraft and uh, CM alpha indicates that the tendency of nose, if see this is the aircraft and aircraft is flying like this, if the tendency of nose after alpha disturbance, it, it will go up and if it is trying to come by, means it is a negative CM alpha, it is anti-clockwise. The CM which is anti-clockwise, then we say that aircraft is longitudinal static step. Next, we have discussed about this uh, uh, directional static stability. In directional static stability, we have seen that C and beta should be greater than zero. So what is the C and beta? It is the Variation of coefficient of yawing moment, Cn is a coefficient of yawing moment. If this coefficient of yawing moment, Cn, varying with side slip angle beta, if the beta is positive, Cn is positive, if beta is negative, Cn is negative. If it is like this, we can say that it is a directionally static stable. So if we plot here, just you can see here, this is the Cn and this is the beta. And if we make plot like this, this is the 
directionally stable plot. This is the directionally stable condition for the plots Cn and beta. So it, it means if the beta we are increasing from 1, 2, 3, 4, your Cn will also increase 1, 2, 3, like this. If you are getting plot in this fashion, then we can say that aircraft is directionally stable. If you see about the lateral, lateral static stability means rolling. If aircraft is flying and if wings are going like this, it means it is aircraft is rolling. So in the rolling condition, the coefficient of rolling moment Cl beta should be less than zero. So if you see that this is the Cl and this is the beta means side slip angle and if the plot is going like this. So it is a, this plot is lateral stable. Okay. So to have the aircraft laterally stable, the plot of Cl versus beta, it should be negative. So what are the main contributor of this longitudinal static stability is main contributor is horizontal tail. The horizontal tail makes the aircraft longitudinal stable. However, the uh, wing, wing, if the aerodynamic center is behind the center of gravity of the aircraft of the wing, then we can say that it is statically longitudinal stable. But mostly the aerodynamic center of the wing will be ahead of the, uh, ahead of the center of gravity of the aircraft. So it will give a positive CM and this positive CM means clockwise direction, nose will go up. So if the nose, the wing tendency mostly make the air, aircraft unstable. Same way, the effect of fuselage will also be destabilizing. So the exact work of the horizontal tail is to give a negative CM alpha and it will make that so that aircraft will be statically stable. So this is the purpose of the horizontal tail. For the directional stability, the vertical tail is the primary component. So the vertical tail makes the aircraft directionally stable. And for the lateral stability, there is a wing configuration. If the wings, uh, as you can see here, it is a high winger and here is the low winger. So if the wing is high, it is laterally stable. If the wing is at the lower side, this is unstable unstable. Okay, but to have this low winger and also laterally stable, we have to give the dihedral. So here is the, this is the angle, which is called dihedral angle. So if we give the dihedral, then aircraft will be laterally static stable. So to have the lateral static stability, either wing should be high winger or if the wings are lower winger, then it should be dihedral. Some angle, the tip should be out uh, above the horizontal plane. If it is like this, then we can say that aircraft is laterally stable. Here I have shown that aircraft coefficient of moment, okay, uh, pitching moment, it is the summation of CM alpha of wing plus CM alpha of fuselage and CM alpha of tail. This CM alpha of the wing, is, it depends upon the aerodynamic center of the wing. If the aerodynamic center is behind the center of gravity of the aircraft, then CM alpha of the wing is less than zero. And if the AC is ahead of the CG, then CM alpha will be greater than zero. So it, the wing position is depend upon the aerodynamic center of the wing. So, but the fuselage always will give destabilizing and here, the actually effect of the fuselage will be ahead of the center of gravity. So the fuselage will provide always CM alpha positive. This will be CM alpha mostly positive because AC is ahead of the AC of wing is ahead of CG. But this CMT, the coefficient of moment of horizontal tail, this will give always CM alpha less than 
zero and this will move in this direction this will move in this direction and this will move in this direction so net result should be zero if okay so then only it will be balanced okay so these are the conditions we have to meet now if you talk about the and uh, this directional static stability we know that c and beta is the primary derivatives this derivative will make will show that aircraft is stable or unstable if the c n beta value is less is greater than zero or the positive we say that aircraft is uh, directionally static stable okay so here we can say that c n beta it is c n is what it is a yawing moment coefficient of yawing moment and this c n is equal to y m y m is what it is a um, yawing moment divided by half rho v square s and b this half rho v square is a velocity of free stream s is a area and b is the span of the wing so this you can see here that for the directional static stability c and beta should be greater than zero as shown here if the beta is positive it introduces a yawing moment positive will be generated right wing go back in this what will happen if you say this is the wing and uh, this is the nose okay so this wing the right wing will go back if the right wing is going back it is positive yawing moment it means nose is going towards the right if the nose is going towards the right side of the from the x axis then we can say that it is a positive yawing so this c n beta contributes the c n beta of the wing here c n beta of the fuselage and c n beta of the vertical tail so here we can see that what is the effect of the vertical tail okay so here this you can see that uh, for the fuselage if the beta is coming from here so it will move and it will go in this direction okay this is the force generated from the fuselage so it will be a c m beta is positive okay but here if you see if this is your vertical tail and from here this beta is coming okay this is the beta so this beta will generate a force fy okay this force into this cg distance let it be lv so this fy into lv and this will be in this direction okay so this is the so for the positive beta here cap nose if this is the nose it will move towards the positive direction means this beta will be neutralized because it is from here it is going and mixing here so it is trying to neutralize the beta and same way it is happening to here also if the vertical tail is downwards also it will give force in this direction your aircraft will turn towards the beta so either you keep your vertical tail upward or vertical tail downwards the effect of same the directional stability both will maintain but we cannot put downwards because it may hit the ground to have the safety from the ground we are putting the vertical tail upward so that it is maintaining the long uh, this directional stability and also safe from hitting the ground during landing and take off because during the take off your nose is going up but tail will go down and tail may hit the runway to avoid that we are placing the vertical tail upward okay so here uh, also the sweep of the wing is also giving c and beta positive so stabilizing effect of the wing fan it is swept it will give directionally stable plane without vertical tail like military aircraft to reduce the radar cross sectional signature uh, how we can find the this um, stability you might have seen that in a, in the b2 bomber and the, this delta wing aircraft nowadays they don't have the vertical tail so there the, the sweep of the wing is giving the directional stability that we have to uh, see here this you can see here one aircraft you can see it is a b52 bomber which is from usa if you see a huge amount of the wing sweeps are given 
this wing sweep as much you have this will give c and beta greater than 0 so it is like it is effect is like a vertical tail so if the vertical tail is not also there this c and beta will give <coughs> a positive uh, value so directionally this will have uh, okay this uh, shape will do the directional stability Okay, the final aim to see the aircraft is dynamic stable. Okay, till now we are talking about the statically stable, but now we have to discuss about the dynamic stable. So, we have to develop equations of motion. So, if it is disturbed and whether it is damping out or not. So, dynamics means it is depend upon the time. With the time factor, if you disturb from here to here, and after some time, if it is going and coming to its equilibrium, then we can say that it is a dynamically stable. Okay. So our intention is to make the aircraft dynamic stable. Because in the real scenario, your aircraft is not stable, static. It is a dynamic, means it is moving with respect to the time. So as and when we disturb the aircraft by some gust or by the pilot interference by the kite, by using the, the control of the aircraft, aircraft should retain its original position after pilot has applied the force or applied the control uh, system. Okay, so that is the objectives. Now, <clears throat> I am going to discuss about the equations of motion and the first is a very basic case where we will be considering a point mass means total mass we assume that it is concentrated on the center of gravity of the aircraft or any uh, cells or any bullet or anything okay so that is called the point mass so equation of motion let us take a simple example of a bullet fired from a gun so why we take the bullet? Because bullet don't have any fuel or any explosive or anything. Once you hit the bullet, bullet's okay, cell will only move. It doesn't carry any explosive, any fuel to propel itself. Like rocket missiles, they carry the fuel. Aircraft will carry the fuel. There, we cannot assume that mass is constant. But here, if you hit the bullet, a bullet is a very perfect case for the point mass system. So this projectile of mass M fired at a flight path angle gamma, we want to know change in position and the velocity. So what is the meaning of equation of motion? That how much its distance is changed, how much its velocity is changed, how much its acceleration is changed. So we have to derive the equation for point mass systems. You can see here that here, whole mass, the point mass means whole mass is concentrated in this point. Okay. And it is a CG of the pro projectile. So here, drag will be there. In this case, drag will be there. So CD can be find out. In this coefficient of drag or drag, we can find out opposite to the V. So this drag will be opposite to the velocity of the system. So, we here we use that alpha is equal to 0 means angle of attack is 0. So, lift will not be there. So, L will be 0. So, now we have to write equation of motion for this case along the V and perpendicular to V. If you can see here that here is X from this point, it is X and it is from the center of the gravity, it is the CG and here is vertical is v. So here we can see uh, this is the velocity v. It is projected in this direction with velocity v. Here it is shown velocity v and this angle of this thing is gamma. This is the flight path angle gamma is shown. So we can make a diagram here, another a free body diagram from here. This is the x and this is the y in this direction and this is the direction of your bullet V and it has got the gamma angle 
the flight path angle. So we have to use here uh, Newton's second law f is equal to m a. So here equation of equation of motion along v direction. So here we can see that the force m into dv by dt it should it should actually have we are taking m dv by dt but if you see that this should be m dv by dt plus v dm by dt but the change in dm mass is equal to zero so here we are just only taking m dv by dt for this case so aircraft and this case the m dv by m the dv by dt is zero only for the bullet not for missile not for aircraft as aircraft and missiles uh, consumes fuel so mass variation is there so in this case ma point mass case is very much fitting for the bullet fired from the gun so this uh, in the direction of the v we can see, see that m dv by dt is equal to minus d minus mg sin gamma. This you can see here minus d. Here is a minus d. This is the d here. So it is opposite to this vena. So it is minus d minus mg. This is the mg. Okay. So here this component of this mg will be here and this will be minus mg sin gamma okay so in this way we have got that uh, in the direction of v the f m dv by dt is equal to minus d minus ng sin gamma and for the this towards the y axis if you see here if any object is moving with velocity v so we will have a centripetal force and this centripetal acceleration is m this v square by r and this is the centri centrifugal force okay so this centrifugal force m v square by r and this is in the y direction are perpendicular to the v so this will be this you can see here this is the perpendicular to the v this t is perpendicular to the v so here m v square by r is equal to minus m g cos gamma this you can see here that <coughs> For the vertical here, this is the mg cos gamma. Okay. So here this y is equal to mg cos gamma. So this we got here now that m v into v by r is equal to minus mg cos gamma. So here m and m, these things are cancelled. So here v into this is called gamma dot. V by R is a gamma dot. So this gamma dot is equal to minus G cos gamma by V. So we got the e equation one in the V direction and this is a perpendicular to the V. We got R, R dot is equal to, this is a gamma dot is equal to minus G cos gamma divided by V. So now we have this equations, four equations we have. First one is a dV by dt is equal to dv by dt is equal to minus half rho v square s c d. So this we can write here for d, we can write minus half rho v square s c d by m because we have divided d by m. I saw this m has gone and minus g sin gamma. This is the equation one. And for this, we can write d gamma by dt is equal to minus g cos gamma okay minus g cos gamma by v third e equation is in the x direction this is the velocity dx by dt is equal to v cos gamma and the y direction it will give v sin gamma so this v sin gamma is gives the halt altitude of the aircraft and this gives the range or the distance of flight so how much distance it will go we can find out by dx by dt is equal to v cos gamma and how much height it can sustain this you can find out by dy by dt is equal to v sin gamma and what is the 
Acceleration dv by dt. This is the acceleration is equal to minus half rho v square scd by m minus g sin gamma. And what is the rate of this um, uh, gamma dot or the rate of this uh, change of flight path angle? This is also we can find out it is a rotational acceleration. It is a minus g cos gamma by v. So these four equations we can derive in this point mass system. Now next, these all are the first order differential equations of motion and how to solve. This is also one problem. So we can see that in equation 1 and 2 and 3, we have the gamma is present. They are coupled first order equation of motion. So we have to have some initial condition. So if we put some initial condition, we can solve these equations of motion. So how to solve now? So at we have to give some conditions and it, this is called the initial condition. So these are the conditions. So at time t is equal to 0, x will be x0. This is the first condition and at y is equal to 0. So x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 0. It is the initial. If it is starting from here, here x is equal to x0 and y is equal to y0 at time t is equal to 0. So this is the, the first condition. Now second condition at time is t is equal to 0, the velocity v is equal to v0. This v0 is called the launch velocity. Okay, so and at t is equal to 0, r is equal to r0 and this r, this gamma is equal to gamma0. So it is called the launch angle. This launch angle gamma may be 1 degree, 5 degree, 10 degree or whatever these conditions to be given. So value of x that is called the range and the y is called the altitude. We can find out how much maximum range and how much maximum altitude this aircraft can go by using the equations of motion which we have just now find out. So in point mass, it is a simplified version which we are going to study by the and we can solve by the numerical methods. You can use the MATLAB or any standard routine, this routine. Okay, so MATLAB is very important tool which we have to apply to solve these equations. So now I am going to discuss about the degree of freedom. We know that aircraft has got the six degree of freedom. The six degree of freedom, we can say that here in this diagram, this is the CG and it is in X direction. This is the Y direction and this is the Z direction. So if aircraft is moving in X direction, it can move in the Y direction in the linear and it can move in the Z direction. Also, it can rotate with respect to X direction that is called mx. It can also rotate with the y direction. It is called my. It also can rotate in the z direction. So there are three linear motion and three rotating motion. This combinedly we can say that there are six degree of freedom of the aircraft. So here I have shown fx, fy, fz and mx, my and mz. So we need the coefficient to find all these six values because we have to use the coefficient. So time is involved to solve. So here involvement of time t makes the system dynamic. So it is necessary to understand the equation of motion clearly so that dynamic behavior of the aircraft can be understood very well. So that is the function of. So, I have completed here. Hope you have understood very well. And in the next class, I am going to discuss about forces responsible for damping of different motions. Next, component of lift force. Then physical significance of CLQ. It is a derivative of DCL by DL D, DQ. Component of the pitching moment and the physical significance of CMQ. So this we are going to discuss in the next class. Hope this will be very useful and it is now the it will start the 
time parameters will be also involved. So dynamic conditions will now onwards will start implementing in the next class onwards. Okay, thank you very much. These are my references which I am taking from Robert C. Nelson from Aircraft Stability and Automatic Control, NPTEL Lectures of Aircraft Stability and Control by Professor A.K. Ghosh from IIT Kanpur. And thank you very much for joining this class. Hope you will again join my next class. In this in next class, I am going to discuss about CLQ and CMQ, a very good uh, important parameter for studying the dynamic stability of the aircraft. Oh, thank you very much. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.